guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to unbox some new additions to the collection. I have a new orchid here and I have a bunch of clippings of Hoya in here. So the first box is from Paula Marsh over at Hillbilly Orchids. She messaged me and asked me if I want to swap some Hoya and I said, heck yeah. So I'm going to show you the new additions. And then the bottom box is an orchid from Maria Piña. We've swapped orchids before. She actually gave me my Hoya Retusa, which is now a beast, and my Hoya Compacta, which is growing nicely. So I'm going to show you these new additions. I sent some stuff over to them as well. I love sharing, and I find that it's just easier with Hoyas to just send clippings, and it's a really good way to grow your collection. So let's get these boxes opened, and I'm going to show you what's inside. Now this first box is from Paula and she sent me a bunch of different Hoyas that I don't have. She sent me a list and I, I told her what I had, what I didn't have, so she sent me a nice variety here. It's perfect because the weather is nice up here in the Northeast so there's no worries about any temperature issues. It hasn't been too hot, hasn't been too cold, so it's a good time to get some of these plants out. I know some folks in Texas um, have had it really hot right now. So that hasn't been good if you're shipping plants and they're sitting in your mailbox. Jumping into the first Hoya we have here, this one is the Hoya Chelsea. This is a Hoya Carnosa variation and the leaves are a little bit different. So when they grow, they're supposed to have little buttons on the inside. There's a nice little texture that's a little different from the standard Hoya Carnosa. I went ahead and potted this up. It had roots already. It was good to go. And if it's just like any other um, Hoya Carnosa, this one's going to be very easy to grow and it's going to take off really quickly. So I look forward to growing this one. Looking at this one, this one I didn't have actually. This one is the Hoya Curtisii. And um, it kind of reminds me of the Hoya Croniana Super Silver. It has similar splash that the Croniana Sil Super Silver has, but it has heart-shaped leaves. I also looked up the flower and the flower looks completely different. So this is a nice one. It's a small leaf Hoya. This is a really nice size uh, cutting. I'm going to put this in water to root. This one I'll probably, the Chelsea I'll probably put in, um, it's already rooted and I'm probably gonna put it in a succulent mix, but a lot of my Hoyas grow really well in LECA, so I'll probably put this one in LECA after it's rooted in water. So this should be pretty easy. I just find these kinds of small leaf Hoya, they tend to be pretty easy to root, unlike some of the ones with woodier stems, so this shouldn't be a problem. I've always wanted this Hoya, so I'm happy to receive it. Now let's see what we have next in here. and. Um, this one is a species Hoya. This one is the Hoya Fichii. So I don't have this one. It kind of reminds me a little bit of my Hoya Finlay Sonii. It is not small leaf or super big leaf either, but it has some veining on it. So let me take it out of the Ziploc so you could check it out. But it's got like some veins and it also, what I like is that it has some roots at the bottom of the stem. So hopefully it'll be easier to root than the Finlay Sonii, which I find to be really hard to root. So I ended up putting this in some sphagnum moss in a bag to take off and hopefully this will start growing. But this is a nice little clipping here. I find that they do grow really fast. I love the veining on them. I, I really enjoy these. Hoya tend to be so expensive, so I'm really happy to receive this. Um, I don't know why they cost so much money when they tend to be very easy to propagate generally. So putting it in sphagnum moss, I think, should do the trick on this one. But I've seen this Hoya listed for $50, like a small one. So I just, you know, when you can cut a piece of your plant and share with a friend, you know, it, it makes a big difference. And they're just not that hard to propagate and they grow pretty easily, so I just don't understand. Anyway, the last Hoya I got from Paula is this Hoya Natalie. From my understanding, this one is a hybrid. It's got really pretty flowers. I'll put pictures so you guys could see it. But this one is a nice cutting. This one's gonna vine really nicely. I love I love seeing them bloom and 
A lot of times they have really nice fragrance and I have a bunch of trellises and pots ready for them, but I look forward to growing this. It kind of reminds me of the Hoya Carnosa as well. So I feel like I got a really nice variety from Paula. I sent her a box of a couple of mine as well that she didn't have. Like I said, I think trading Hoyas is the best way to grow them in your collection. I have a lot of Hoyas that I got um, first from Yoshi from Orchids by the Lake and he sent me some clippings that were about this size. Some of them were even smaller and now those plants are really established, really big. It's only been about a year and a half since I got them and they just grow so fast. So I do find them very easy to grow, especially compared to orchids. They seem to have similar care, they flower. A lot of them grow really well in LECA. Some of them don't, but you tend to find out as you're growing them. I find the small leaf ones grow really well in LECA. The Carnosa type, the pubic calyx, those, those seem to work well. Um, but the ones with the woody stems, maybe a little less. But anyway, I digress. I find these to be really easy to grow. I love the flowers. They do vine, so you have to trellis them up, but I've been really happy to get into this rabbit hole. Paula, thank you so much for sharing these with me. I look forward to growing them, and I'll give you guys updates as they take off and they start growing. So I put them, I put the Curtisii in water, and I potted the Chelsea up already. It's in um, a succulent mix since it was already rooted. And the other two, I have them in a little sphagnum moss. So they are in a little Ziploc with some sphagnum moss. So hopefully we'll get some roots on those soon so I can get them potted up. So once again, thank you so much, Paula. And now let me show you the other things that I got. So this next box here is from Maria Piña and she had an orchid for me that I don't have. So I'm looking forward to sharing it with you guys. But she wrote me a cute little note that she um, she enjoys sharing it with me. And um, it's super cute. I appreciate it, Maria. But yeah, she sent me my Hoya Retusa. She sent me my Hoya Compacta in the past. We like to swap plants with each other. So it's such a nice way to grow the collection. So let me get this box opened up to show you what she sent me. So she sent me a variety of a couple of different things that I don't have in my collection, so I was happy to receive it. And when I took it out, I found that she had them going in a little bit of sphagnum moss, which is great. And um, the first one that she sent me was the Hoya Nuna Yellow. This one is a smaller leaf Hoya. This one is a cutting that she sent me from her plant. This one has yellow flowers, obviously. This one's a smaller leaf Hoya. I'll probably, once it's out of the, um, once it has its roots, I'm debating if I'm gonna put it in LECA, like the rest of my, um, my Hoyas, or if I'm gonna put them in some sort of succulent mix. They tend to do well in either um, these smaller leaf types, but I'm looking forward to growing this one. So this is the Hoya Nuna Yellow. The next one that Maria sent me is also another one that I don't have. This one has slightly bigger leaves than the Hoya Nuna Yellow, and this one's the Hoya Mindarensis Gold. And I love that she put it in here with some sphagnum moss to get the cuttings to start rooting right away. This was perfect. It was still moist when I received it. Um, so that's always nice. And I kind of kept that set up, so I put... I put um, some water in there. I have them in a little Ziploc bag. Keep the humidity high so that I could get it going. I do find that the woodier stem Hoya do tend to be a little trickier to root than the um, ones that are less woody. But this one kind of also reminds me of my Finlaysonii minus the veining. But I'm looking forward to growing it. And the last thing that Maria sent me is an orchid that I don't have. So this one is a terrestrial orchid. It's not an epiphyte. This one grows in the ground and I have never had one of these in my collection before. It's known for the foliage mostly. It does flower though and it's beautiful. It kind of shimmers as well. And if you didn't notice by the thumbnail already, this one is a uh, jewel orchid. So 
This is the very first one that I've gotten before. So I'm going to learn how to take care of it and make sure that it thrives in my conditions. It grows in um, pretty much a soil mix, which is not typical for orchids, but given that this one is more terrestrial-like, it gets different care. So once I learn how to care for this orchid a little bit more, I will share that with you guys and do a care video for you. But this one, I love how it shimmers. Like when you look at it in the light, it's nice and shiny. It's like sparkly and it held up well through shipping. So it was in the post for about three days. So I gave it a quick water and the leaves promptly perked up. So it's doing great in my care right now. And I'm so happy to grow this. So between this um, jewel orchid and the new Hoyas, I have a lot of new uh, plants to look after, to root and take care of. The Hoyas will take a couple of weeks to root and then I will get them in their permanent pots. Once they push roots out, they tend to start growing very easily especially now that we're heading into summer. I'm very excited about that Hoya Fichii and that Hoya Mindarensis Gold. I just love the leaves, I love the flowers, and um, like I said, Hoyas are very similar to orchids in that a lot of them have really nice fragrance and they tend to flower more often. So as you can wonder, that's why I got into them. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll keep you updated. Bye, everyone.